Hello everyone, my name is Carl Irwin Sukim and in this video I will be talking about the definition, history and scope of IHL. First, let's look at the definition of the international humanitarian law. International humanitarian law is comprised of international rules established by treaty or custom which are specifically intended to solve humanitarian problems directly arising from international or non-international armed conflicts. Its principal aims are to protect persons and property that are or may be affected by the conflict, for example, civilians and prisoners of wars and civilian objects. And it is also to limit the right of the parties to a conflict to use methods and means of warfare of their choice. Now, it is primarily the duty of states to respect and ensure respect for international humanitarian law. Other actors also play a role in IHL implementation, in particular the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, which has been mandated by the international community with specific protection and assistance tasks in times of armed conflict. The United Nations and other non-governmental organizations are also increasingly relying on international humanitarian law to better advocate on behalf of civilians affected by armed conflict. IHL, which is applicable only in times of armed conflict, does not deal with the legality of use of force by states or other actors, but applies whenever an armed conflict breaks out regardless of the underlying reasons. The legality or the legitimacy of use of force in international relations is regulated by the United Nations Charter and by customary international law. Now let's look at the history of international humanitarian law. IHL was founded by uh, five Swiss citizens in 1863. They are Henri Dunant, uh, Gilome Henri Dufour, Gustave Moynier, Louis Appia and Theodore Monnoir. The ICRC is the founding member of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. The IHL is an impartial, neutral and independent humanitarian institution. It is an organization like no other. It was born out of war over 150 years ago and its mandate was handed down by the international community. The IHL acts as a neutral intermediary between belligerents and it is also the promoter and guardian of international humanitarian law. It strives uh, to promote and assist the victims of armed conflicts, internal disturbances and other situations of internal violence. Now let's look at the scope of the IHL. International humanitarian law consists of a large number of international treaties that have been developed over the past 150 years, starting with the Geneva Convention of 1864, uh, which is the amelioration of the condition of the wounded in armies in the field. However, the bulk of modern IHL is composed of the four Geneva Conventions of 1949 and two additional protocols of 1977. Let's look at each of the instruments of international humanitarian law. We have the Convention for the Amelioration of the Condition of the Wounded and Sick in Armed Forces in the field. Second, we have the Geneva Convention for the Amelioration of the Condition of Wounded, Sick and Shipwrecked Members of Armed Forces at Sea. Third, we have the Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war. Fourth, we have the Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war. And the protocols, we have the protocols relating to the protection of victims of international armed conflicts. We also have the protocols relating to the protection of victims of non-international armed conflict. And we also have the additional distinctive emblem, Protocol 3rd, which was signed in 8 December 2005. Now, IHL is only one among many public international law. For example, we have the refugee law, we have human rights law, we have maritime law, we also have environmental law, laws governing diplomatic relations, 
laws governing international organizations and laws governing economic relations. In conclusion, IHL are international rules to solve humanitarian problems arising from international or non-international armed conflicts. It was founded in 1863 and IHL is still around after over 150 years to act as a neutral intermediary between belligerents. Uh, and IHL is composed of the four Geneva Conventions of 1949 and two additional protocols of 1977 and a third additional protocol on the emblems of 2005. I hope you have learned something from this video and thank you very much.